message to us. Reminder. Let me do that while I'm thinking reminding, because I may forget towards the end. Uh, these poinsettias that are here at the front of the church, um, we would love them for to go home with you after church today, or to your neighbors, or to wherever, uh, so that they might be enjoyed on through the Christmas uh, days and into the new year. And so please, when we dismiss, um, come and grab one, two, or three until they're gone and take them uh, with you, just a little bit of water, and, and they're good. And so they've actually stayed together this year in spite of me. I'm not sure who did the watering, but they got taken care of this time. Thank you, Michelle, for making sure that they stayed red and alive. But we want you to take those um, at the end of the service today uh, with you. So, <clears throat> you like things to go as expected, don't we? I mean, we got these wedding plans coming up, and, and this happens on Friday, and and so there's all sorts of things, and we want this to happen and that to happen. It just reminded me of when I proposed to Vicky, and I had this plan of just how it would go, and, and the proposal did not go anything like I had planned it to go. I mean, we were going to our favorite restaurant to eat, and I had it all planned as to how it was all going to work, and it just all went bad when I couldn't even... Now, I had eaten at this restaurant in Tulsa, this place called Casa Bonita, and... Uh, but we were in Oklahoma City, and I was going to the Casa Bonita there that I had never been to before. Uh, college students at OBU, and we were going up there to eat, and she just thought we were going out, and, and uh, we couldn't even find Casa Bonita. I mean, it just, it just made it go downhill from there. By the time we did find Casa Bonita, I was in no mood to propose, and uh, she most likely would have said no at that point. And, um, and so it just, she didn't even know it was coming, but a few days, weeks later anyway, she was fixing dinner for me and I proposed at that point. But sometimes we just have plans as to how we think things are going to go as expected and, and they just don't happen. And when those things don't go as expected, sometimes we just kind of throw our hands up and we go, no good could come out of this. And even though the proposal didn't go as expected and all of that, the wedding pretty much came off, well it didn't really go as expected either because we got married in January and uh, there was three inches of ice on the ground. And, uh, and so the preacher that was to perform our wedding ceremony that we had gone through all of our counseling with and everything, he couldn't make it from Ada to Skytook to the wedding. And uh, so we had our backup plan, um, a minister there in town, and uh, he came and did the ceremony. And so we had planned all of this stuff for the wedding. I mean, I was singing to her. We were exchanging rings in a very unique way. And we just kind of had to throw all that out because it was too much to put on this preacher to to do that at the last minute so things even at our wedding didn't quite go as expected but yet when we it was all said and done we were married and um, and so who knows what's going to happen come Friday um, with this wedding um, but whether it happens as we expect it to or not there's a wedding going to take place and uh, it kind of made me think that I wonder if Christmas Day happened exactly as Mary and Joseph had planned it. What do you think? I mean, think, think about this baby coming into this world, and they had been told things, both of them, by angels and all of this stuff. And, and so here comes this uh, issue of taxation to where they all have to return to their hometown. And so here he takes her along on a camel or a donkey or a golf cart or something along that lines in order to get her there. And, and then when they get there, there's absolutely no room uh, in any of the hotels or motels or inns or anything of that point. And the only place for them to stay is, is in a stable out back. I mean, just a, a stinky place where all the animals would be fed and where they would do all of their stuff. And, and that's where they would lay their head. And little did they know that that night she was going to give birth to this baby and nothing as they may have planned and thought about in their mind. But it didn't change the fact even for them as they looked at it that God brought this baby to earth and blessed them with this child that even in Joseph's mind, he said, this child's going to change the world. They had been told a message, but maybe not fully grasping and understanding what that message was. 
Won't you find with me in your Bibles Galatians chapter 4? Galatians chapter 4, maybe not the passage you would turn to um, when you think about uh, the birth of Christ, but yet it contains for us this message that even though things may not go as expected and, and the world may not be as what we think it ought to be, God's got a plan. And in His perfect timing, He brings His perfect gift with a perfect purpose for us. And, and so in the midst of life and what is going on, let us think for just a few moments um, about what may not sound like a perfect birth and a perfect scenario when you read in Luke and how that all comes to be. It's a perfect Christmas Scene. Why don't you stand with me this morning and let me read these few verses of Scripture from Galatians chapter 4. Beginning in verse 1, he says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also... When we were children, we're enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But listen to this. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you were sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Father, we thank you for this passage of Scripture. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that in this Christmas story is the picture of your perfect timing and your perfect plan, your mission being initiated and even accomplished through these beginning steps. May we celebrate that today. And may your spirit move in our hearts as we study your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> God's perfect timing. That passage of scripture says, but when the fullness of time had come, or when, when the time was fully right, when it was the perfect time, now think back to the Luke passage, and does it look perfect? I mean, it's a starlit night, right? It's, it's all of those things, but for them, there was no hospital, there was no doctor, whatever might have been the case in those days, the ladies helping deliver, all, I mean, there was, there was none of that. They were there with, the, with all of the animals, with the cows and the horses and the donkeys and the sheep and whatever would have been in there. They were there. But yet in the midst of that, it is a perfect time for God to bring His plan to earth. His perfect Son. In the Greek words, there are two words for time. One is kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. And it, it's this idea of opportune time. It means that you seize the opportunity that comes your way. It, and, and many times that might just be by accident. That, that kairos time. And then there's chronos. K-R-O-N-O-S. It's the word in which we get our word chronology from. The idea is that there's an orderly progression of events. Everything follows a proper sequence. It's all exactly right. It is that type of time that Paul is using when he says when the time had fully come or in the fullness of time God didn't just decide on the spur of a moment to take advantage of this opportune time of, of Mary and Joseph being called to Bethlehem and Mary and Joseph not having a place to stay in a regular motel room but being out in a stable this opportune time that's not he didn't just decide hey now we'll do it now because it's not going to get any better than this. No. God had planned and God had orchestrated every detail. 
the sequence of events calling for the census and the taxation and all of those things to happen. Getting, getting Joseph to have to return to his hometown so that prophecies of Old Testament could be fulfilled in which tells us of where Christ would be born. So all of these things would fall into play and be exactly God was orchestrating every step, all these specific events, to where it just, everything was right. And the time was just right. He sent His Son, His only Son, into the world in the fullness of time. When the timing was right. Listen to this. Acts 17, verse 26 says this. From one man, God made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And He determined the times that were set for them and the exact places where they should live it's a pretty good scripture for us today to tell us God's in control. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. But God's time, your life, my life, our lives are in the hands of God and He's the one that keeps the clock. He, he's the one that makes everything beautiful in His time. He's the one that is orchestrating all events that are happening in our life. And He was orchestrating this event to bring His Son to earth at the perfect time. We can see it from the Old Testament to the New Testament, even in our own lives, that God does things on His timetable in His time in the right time. Think of Joseph. We could think of a lot of Old Testament folks. We could think of Abraham. We could, we could look to Moses. We, we might even look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We could look at different folks, but just for a moment, think of Joseph. Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. He was the grandson of Isaac. He had a coat of many colors. We're familiar with that. His brothers were all jealous of him and, and didn't like the fact that Daddy liked him a little bit more than he liked all of them. And there was on one occasion that Joseph went out to see his brothers and they decided that they'd strip him of his coat. They'd throw him in this hole and leave him to die. And at just the right time, a caravan came that was on their way passing by and they thought, hey, maybe we could sell Joseph for a little bit of money and We'd be better for it, and then we wouldn't. We just. And that's exactly what they did. And it's at just the right time that Joseph arrived in Egypt. And at just the right time, he was put in a place to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And at just the right time, he was made second in command only to Pharaoh in all of Egypt. And at just the right time, a famine struck. and His brothers had to make their way to Egypt. That was the only place for them to even possibly be considered to get some food. And exactly the right time, Joseph was reunited with his family. And Joseph captured all of this with these words. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. God's perfect time and God's plan coming together. God's in control. Nothing, man, I was, I was writing these words this morning as I was revamping a little bit of the sermon. I was revamping this and rewriting this at, at the exact time that my phone rang to let me know that Rex was having a stress test. And, and all that's going on with them and just the, the decisions and things that are being made for them based on what's going on. And, and I, God is in control of time. Nothing happens in this world that is done that's a surprise to Him. It, it just doesn't... God, God never says, I didn't see this coming. God, it, it just... It, it never throws Him off when, when stuff comes at us and we weren't expecting it. 
God's, God's in control of this stuff in this time. He's in charge. And, and we see that in, in the Old Testament. We see it in the New. We see it in our own lives now. And sometimes it's, it's a challenge to us to understand why it's happening, the way it's happening, when it's happening. But God's got a perfect timing to everything. He's also got a perfect gift in it for us. In this particular story, the story of Christmas. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law. In God's perfect timing, He sent His perfect gift his son you know if we were to have history and records of everything there were probably some other babies that were born along the timeline that maybe didn't have the most ideal entrances into this earth right some others that might have been born maybe not in a hospital or maybe not under the you know I mean maybe not all in a manger and in a in a stable but there were there were bound to be others that had been born God's hand was on their birth and brought them in and in the way and the fashion that He had designed for them to be born. But none compared to the baby that was born that day. Because that baby was God's only son. God's perfect gift for all mankind. Born in a fashion that Nobody else would ever be born in. Yeah, I meant born of a woman, but, but not conceived by the Spirit of God. No. Different. But different in such a way that it was perfect. And He was perfect. No one else would do. Only the best. Only God's best. Only God's Son, His only Son. In God's perfect timing, He sent His perfect gift, His Son, with a mission. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. God sent His Son to redeem, to buy back. That's what that is. Leviticus 25 talks to us about this redemption process. It was the price paid that would gain freedom for a slave. It would be, it would be a payment that would be made that would pay their debt in full so that they could be redeemed, so that they could be free. It says we were born under the law, or those that were under the law. This idea is we're under the law, but we can't keep the law. That's, that's really the purpose behind the law being given in the first place. It was not just... So we would think about, I've got to do A, B, C, and D, but it would be to help us realize that there is no way that we can keep A, B, C, D, and on through the rest of them. That we were born under the law, but there was no way for us to keep the law, so God had to send His perfect gift, His Son, so that we could be redeemed from that hopeless situation. That we could never do enough right to put us back into a right relationship with the God that created us. And He had to send His Son with the perfect purpose to redeem us so we could be adopted into His family, so that we could be made joint heirs with Jesus. Folks, that ought to put a smile on your face if you know Christ. That, that because of what He has done, we can have freedom and we can have life and we become sons and heirs. That's why He came. Jesus was and is our Redeemer. He lives a perfect life. 
He, he doesn't do anything wrong. He shows us that, that he, he never sins. He paid a price so that we could be released from our sin and, and the slavery that we have to sin. Jesus, this baby born in a manger, in, in, in the most unthought about circumstances for king and royalty to be born into, He comes into the world in that fashion lives a perfect life, and in 33 years is going to end up on an old rugged cross to die for you and for me, to redeem us. That's what He came to do. In God's perfect timing and with His perfect Son, He had a perfect plan. The mission of Christmas. The whole reason that He came was to seek and to save the lost, was to give hope to the hopeless, was to bring joy and peace to those whose life had no joy and they knew no peace. That's what He came for. He came so that we might have life and have it to the full. <laughs> Romans 13 says, The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. It goes on to say, because salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Wake up. <laughs> to the Christian, it's telling us to rejoice. To the non-believer, it's telling us to be concerned. The clock is ticking. Make your choice. The fullness of time has come. God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons, that we would no longer be a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through him. Christ came to forgive people of their sins. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came to redeem. That was his mission. That's the purpose of Christmas. To get a gift under the tree here and there, to be able to give some gifts, that's that's all an offspring of, of the greatest gift that ever came. Two questions for you this morning. Have you allowed the perfect gift to change your world? Has there, has there been a time in your life in which you've let God's perfect timing of sending His perfect gift to accomplish its perfect purpose in your life. If not, could it be in God's infinite knowledge, just knowledge of all things, that He would bring you to this place at this time to hear this message so that you could respond and receive His perfect gift as your own. That in God's fullness of time He would bring you to this place that you might say, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died in my place. I confess my sin to Him and I commit my life to Him. Could it be? That's why you're here today. If you've never made that decision, we prayed for you this morning. We prayed that today would be the day of salvation in your life. We prayed that today would be the day you realize, not their words, but mine now, that God in His perfect timing would send His perfect Son to offer you a perfect gift that you might receive it today as your own. So if you haven't done that, would you surrender today? Would you do that? And then the second thing is, have, having made that decision to trust Christ as your Savior and Lord, would you take the mission of Christmas and purpose to live it out 
and to share it with others. To let them see in you the difference that Christ can make. To let them hear from you the difference that Christ has made in your life and that He came to make in theirs. That this baby born in a manger grew to die on a cross for the sins of all mankind. The mission of Christmas for the believer is that we would carry on His work, that we would share the message that salvation is available to all who will call upon Which of those two choices do you need to make? Because you're there. You're either lost without Him dying and going to hell in need of a Savior that was born for you on Christmas Day. And you can receive Him this morning. Or you know Him and we need to be sharing Him with the world. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. Father God, we ask you this morning that, Father, you would convict us, your Holy Spirit would work in our lives. If we've never trusted you as Savior and Lord, may your Spirit draw us this morning. May we sense that in a strong way, that, that today is the day of salvation for us, that the Redeemer would become our Redeemer we would be set free. Or Father, as one of your followers and as one of the redeemed, that we'd be committed and convicted that we would take the message and we'd share it. Use these moments. Have your way. In Christ's name.